Hey everybody, I picked up a new gadget, the CyberQ Cloud. First time using this tool, first time walking through it. You want to come along for the ride? Well, keep on watching. Yes, I did cave. I got a cyber Q. Uh, from, from some of you who have been telling me for years to get one, I'll love it. I never thought I needed one, and I still don't think I need one. I mean, I have a, a ceramic Kamado. Those things can dial in and lock into a temperature and hold it for hours on end, and it doesn't phase me one bit, and I can walk away, but not leave the house necessarily, but I can walk away and go to bed, watch TV, do other things around and not care too much about watching the grill that often, right? It was beautiful. It still is beautiful. I don't need a cyber cube. I just want one. Oh, actually, I do want one, but uh, it was only because I, my, my current temperature probe, my Maverick ET732, uh, annoyed me for the final time after many years of loyal usage. I got tired of having to buy new replacement probes all the time and have it flake out on me um, unexpectedly and give out you know these little LL readings and other things on there that were just like annoying and would come and go and just it was just frustrating at times to uh, to have to depend upon just that and also that Maverick also only has one temperature probe and one pit probe and this CyberQ has three food probes three of them I can and and I can do and I've done up to seven uh, pork butts at one time before and it's not uncommon for me to do three for example, and it would be nice to have three separate probes telling me what the three separate temperatures are inside each of these pieces of meat. And the CyberQ can do that. It's also Wi-Fi enabled. Like my Maverick uh, was only, it was wireless, not Wi-Fi. Big difference, wireless had about a 300 foot range. It, it can go from one side of my house to the other and I can still get a signal most of the time. Uh, but now with the Wi-Fi, I, uh, and it being uh, port forwarded out on the web and on the internet, I can be anywhere and have my phone in my hand or a laptop or an office computer or, or a friend's phone or whatever. Wherever I'm at, I can pick up a phone uh, with, with a data connection that is and punch in a website, check on the progress of my cook, and I can even record it. This thing can chart your cook from, from time and temperature all the way across um, your entire cooking cycle and you can see where your highs and lows were and how well your grill behaved. I thought that was neat. Again, not necessary, not a necessity, but it is a nice thing to have. So the parts that come included in this thing are, are all I needed, but it only came with one food probe. And I, I told you just a minute ago, I wanted to get three food temperatures going. So I had to buy a couple additional probes. So it cost a little extra money, but I got all of this set up. I got the wireless or the Wi-Fi again, sorry, uh, the Wi-Fi working on this thing. It's set up on my phone, my, I, my uh, iPad, my computers, and I can monitor this thing from everywhere. So I am ready to start a test cook. And, and for my test cook, I chose a pair of spare ribs. Why? Because they were in my freezer and I didn't want to go to the store and buy anything else. And it's only a five hour cook and not a 14 hour cook. And I just wanted to get my feet wet. I wanted to see how this thing behaves with my grill before I put something bigger and longer on this thing, right? So uh, other than that, uh, let's, let's move on and see how things go, huh? And here are the, all the parts out of the box, all the uh, piece parts here, including a couple extra probes I purchased to, to plug into food two and three at some point in the future. And this is actually pretty, so far it looks, looks pretty nice. I tested it out on my countertop here, got it working on my uh, Wi-Fi network and it's on the cloud uh, out there so I can actually monitor it from my phone. All I gotta do is plug this into my Kamado Joe and get it going. All right, I'm gonna slide this back here. Now it's supposed to fit in here like this and this clip is supposed to go on it like this. So uh, you insert it like this. All right, I'm supposed to slide over to this little notch over here on the bottom and this is supposed to slide up and over, I guess. Whoop, up into the slot. It's a curved slot, so it's giving me a little, little trouble, but let's see. There we go, I think that's stuck in there. This thing closes over it like this. 
and it snugs it up along the edge here and all around. So now it's captured, hopefully well enough to not leak too much air. And now the next piece to go on is this Pit Viper fan. So I'm going to slide this in here. Just like that, it just sort of hangs it by friction apparently. And there's a sliding door here to adjust the damper. I'm not sure, I'll have to check the manual what it recommends for this, but for now I'm going to leave it wide open. I'm going to plug the fan into the fan port. There we go. And the power adapter into the power port. And then I'm going to plug this conveniently into my power. Right in the wall there. It might be hard to see because of the light here, but uh, let me see if we can cover this here. It's kind of hard to see, but it says it's uh, finding the IP address and it will do that in just a moment and it'll be on the wireless network already. Next, I'm going to connect the pit probe, which is this piece here with the little alligator clip on the tip. I'm going to plug it into the pit one, snap it up in there. <laughs> It's apparently already setting the alarm, so I'll just hit the button to turn it off for now. Uh, it's saying that the food temp is low because, you know, there's nothing really on it, right? So, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm going to put the next probe into food one, and this is going to be my food probe. Oh, there it goes again. This is going to be my food probe, and that's going to go in the meat later. And for this cook, I'm cooking indirectly. So with my Kamado Joe, as you can see, I, I got my lump charcoal started. I put some wood chunks on there, put the deflector plates on. Put on my main grate, closed the lid, adjusted the vents, and I heated this thing up to uh, my desired temperature. As far as the vent setting, well, the bottom vents are already set by the Pit Viper fan. So uh, the top one, I'm not sure right now, but I'm going to go ahead and close it most of the way. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave a small crack back here and leave this wheel open for now and monitor it on my Share My Cook app on my phone. Now the temperature on the grate is about 185, so I'm going to go ahead and close this all the way. I'm going to crank this thing down to maybe a sliver like I would normally do for a 225-250 cook, and we'll see how this goes. Alright folks, time to single-handedly, literally, put on a slab of ribs here. Alright, move that closer to the probe and make room for my rib tips next door here. So, Go ahead and let that go and monitor it via the Share My Cook app. So using an iPad or an iPhone, I use an iPad in this example because it's got bigger screen for, for you and I to see while we walk through this. But basically you open up a web browser, punch in sharemycook.com after you've registered and signed up and you gotta register your grill and, 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 uh, and, create, and create a cook, they call it, and set that all up. But once it's going, it works pretty good. You can actually start seeing within a matter of minutes the uh, the charting going on where it will start charting the, the uh, food in, in pit probe and you can watch it slowly like creep up over time towards my 250 de degree uh, uh, goal and it you know it, it and as it got there it, it tapered off it, it rose a lot the fan was worrying 100% like a, for a very long time to get this thing heated up and when it heated up it got to about 250 it tapered off it slowed down like it should the fan slowed down, the fan ultimately shut off, and it overshot a few degrees, 255 degrees. I'm not complaining. I cook food, and you know, plus or minus 40 degrees either way sometimes. Uh, I just kind of get it on in the, in the low to mid 200s, and as long as it doesn't get too low or too high, I'm fine. And this did an even better job at that, so 5 degrees is nothing. And you can see on my chart as the... As I've opened the lid and closed the lid, you, you see the temperature spikes being recorded there, right? And, and even when I put the food probe in, the food probe was just hanging loose on the grill in the 90 degree weather. I put the food probe in the cold ribs and it instantly dropped down to the internal temperature of the food probe. So I think it is very responsive and it was really impressive to see the whole plot of this thing from start to finish as to uh, all the highs and lows and all the little things you did. And in case you ever get a blip or, or something happens that, that you want to record, they have like a little notes area where you, where you can add a note at a certain point. So you go, oh, well, what's that spike or drop there? You say, oh, I added a note. So I opened the lid and it got hot because I was taking too long putting on some, some other dish or something alongside the ribs. Who knows, right? It was really cool to see. And in summary, I liked it. I did. I, I I'm, I'm had a successful cook with it, and I am going to go ahead and use this in a, a, um, on my next cook. Uh, I'm going to do something bigger, of course, brisket, ribs, chuck roast, uh, whatever I can uh, throw on the grill 
soon, right? I want to try this out for a longer period of time. Yeah, it is a little pricey, um, more than I wanted to spend, but truth is, as, you know, I'm, I, I'm in my 40s, folks. It's like, if I'm going to buy a nice gadget by the time I'm 44 years old, like I am today, when am I, right? I thought I'd treat myself. That's simple as that. There are many other temperature monitors out there which would have sufficed. The Thermoworks Smoke looked pretty cool. I almost bought that, but I wanted to try a temperature controller and monitor. And uh, so that's why I went with the CyberQ. So far, I'm happy with it. I'm going to do some more videos and some more cooking for sure on this thing. Uh, this video was just my first time using it, getting, just getting acquainted with it, and I wanted to share that with you folks. So I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe, and I will talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe.